Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to talk about holy stoning. Battleship New Jersey is in the middle of a five-year, five million dollar project to redeck the ship with new teak. Fresh teak that has been sanded comes out this beautiful blonde color. Over time, however, the sun fades it out to gray. So, now that we have a new deck, part of the care and keeping for it is to keep it this nice blonde color. Holy stoning goes all the way back to the age of sail when your whole darn ship was made out of wood. Uh, and you would use a stone that has some grit on it, you use some sand and some water to create an abrasive surface to sand your wood deck. This tradition remained intact through the entire service life of wood deck ships in the Navy. Modern ships don't use the wood deck anymore. They have insulated uh, steel decks with non-skid on top of them. We are the last wood deck ships still in service in the 1990s. So obviously the deck of the ship has a lot of surface area. Hey, that's fine. A battleship has a lot of non-rates on board and a lot of decades. You can get a lot of people. Let's talk about the, uh, the pieces first. We talked about the sand and the water that you need and the holy stone. Why is it called the holy stone? Well, it's very similar in size to a Bible and you use it down on your knees like you're praying. So often they're called prayer stones, Bibles, prayer books, or holy stones. And holy stoning is the name that has stuck. I would clean it in what we call a holy stone, which was just a white coarse brick. And we used them so much, you wear a hole all the way through it, or wear the headlines that you used, going back and forth, go through times across one board and move the next one back 30 times. And it went snow white when you got done, you went over and done it again. The more modern way of doing this is to chisel a hole in your fire brick that you would use as a uh, holy stone and take a broom handle. When you insert the broom handle in the brick, you can bend over, hold it like this, and lock it in place, and then go back and forth. And there's lots of footage of just a whole row of sailors down the deck, all like this, doing it in unison. Early uh, American steel hauled ships, like the Cruiser Olympia, had really thick wooden decks. So you could holy stone them all day and all night. Even going into the World War I era dreadnought battleships, they had uh, wood decks that were four or maybe even six inches thick, and they tended to be made out of wood grown here in America, firs and pines and that sort of stuff. In the 1920s, the Washington Naval Treaty limits the displacement of capital ships, cruisers, battleships, aircraft carriers. And uh, so with that in mind, one of the areas that they reduced weight was with the wood decks. So they tended to use only two inch thick, but the wood they went to was teak. Teaking it making sure that, you know, uh, the bed, the, um, the planks, if they need to be changed, we did that. You know, you would have to take off this plug here, take off this plug, or you would have to just, you know, cut it out and we would change the plank. We had spare planks and the rubber, it's just, you know, it's like a, a, a gasket in between and we would put that back in there. And we would have the holy stone as well. You know, holy stone is with a little stone with a hole in it. And you put a stick in there and about 12 or 15 guys would go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. As normally as one of the penny officers would be wetting the deck down and then you would switch to a next board like that. And that's what you would do. And everybody would be doing it at the exact same time. And then you would switch. And that's known as Holy Stone because the deck is teak. They expected to uh, be able to get 20 years out of a wood deck on the ship. So uh, 
over those 20 years, having sailors constantly sanding it, um, they were worried it was going to wear away the deck uh, to an unsafe level. And so at various times in the 1930s and later, uh, moratoriums were placed on holy stoning the deck. I have no idea what sailors did in their free time when they uh, weren't being forced to do that. Well, we, uh, downtime, uh, like I say, I was in the deck force for about six months. And uh, you, you holy stone the, the deck, you uh, chipped rusted paint, put zinc coal by on it, and then repainted it. The, the color of the ship was, in the Pacific, was all gray. And uh, then, well, we had our, you know, three square meals a day, and then we would get into uh, loading parties. When supplies come aboard, we would have to go to a loading party and load all the supplies. On. But uh, it never lasted particularly long, and came back into use fairly later. Uh, came back into use within a couple of years, if it ever went away entirely. There were also chemical ways to bleach the deck, and I believe on this ship, uh, particularly in the uh, 60s and 80s, when they didn't want to replace the deck, they would have just chemically stained it or bleached it to, to get that blonde color, if they were even worried about such a thing. We are hoping to get 40 or more years out of our teak deck, and so we will not literally be uh, holy sewing it like I am. After we've installed it, we take a, a big old belt sander buffer type thing and polish it all smooth, and then we're just letting it weather naturally. So this wood here that's gray uh, has been laid and uh, allowed to weather the blonde wood behind me uh, isn't everything that I've holy stoned today. That is wood that has been more recently laid and sanded, and within a couple of months, it'll be the same gray color. Now, unlike the Navy, we don't have 2,000 people on board, so we need volunteers to help uh, maintain the deck. I promise I won't make you holy stone, but there are plenty of other projects that you can help with. If you live too far away to volunteer, but would still like to support the project, there's a link in the description. A question we're often asked is, what the heck is the uh, sand locker for? If you check out our booklet of general plans, the forwardmost compartment on second deck is labeled as a sand locker. Well, that sand is what we're using to make the abrasive for the uh, holy stoning. So it would always be carried in the bow of the ship in a space that's otherwise unusable. It's a brick of about the size of a brick. It had a little indentation in the center of it, and it was abrasive. And you use the stick, and you would just go back and forth with the stick like this, and then you shift to the next board. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, shift. One, two, three, four, five, six, shift. And you would shift each board. And these are all the crew was spread out. Your division was spread out all over the main deck. And you would cover, eventually cover every part of the deck with. Have you ever been forced to holy stone? Let us know your story in the comment section below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. Also, from a number of businesses and private viewers like yourselves. In particular, the support that you guys have given us over the last year has allowed us to go from making one video a week to multiple videos a week, and we really appreciate it. If you'd like to continue to support us, there's a link in the description below. Also, remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified every time we put out new content. Thanks for watching. And uh, that's bringing back, trying to bring back memories. And that was a holy stoner on the deck there. And uh, that was really an experience. And got to enjoy that even. <laughs>